And welcome back to Politics Unplugged. The race to face Donald Trump in the November election is now down to two Democrats, and it could come down to the wire. According to the New York Times, their delegate count right now shows Joe Biden leading Bernie Sanders 881 delegates to 725. While he's ahead by more than 150 delegates, Biden still needs just over 1,100 delegates to secure that nomination. More numbers for you, 577 are on the line this Tuesday when voters in four states head to the polls. More than 200 of those delegates are in Florida alone. Now, Democratic strategist Steve Walchard is back with us tonight. So much to talk about. Biden, obviously, a series of big wins. What's your take on it right now? Well, the race is functionally over right now, and Bernie knows it as well. I think they're, they're just kind of jockeying for position, for platform ideas, and to make sure both sides feel good about this thing coming down to the finish line. So let's get into this dynamic, because I remember after Iowa, after Vermont, yeah. um, Joe Biden's political eulogy was being written. How did this thing turn around? Give uh, me some analysis. The, the old bit was an ink. It was not even a, a penciled experience. So... You know, look, Democrats have decided they want to, they want this to be over with right now. They're, they're, they're kind of past all this conversation. And, and the wave broke. The wave could have broken for Bloomberg, could have broken for Biden. Biden had the South Carolina win. It broke for him. And um, he didn't have the best campaign. In fact, he was broke, right, going to, coming out of South Carolina. He had no money for Super Tuesday. It doesn't matter. I mean, Donald Trump proved four years ago he have to have the best campaign to win. And Joe Biden's proving it again this year. What are your thoughts? Because Bloomberg did spend a lot of money. Uh, there was that discussion in the last debate yeah. about who can beat Donald Trump, who is that candidate. You saw in the CNN exit polls that many people, I believe the number was 69 percent, right. said the key to their vote was who could beat Donald Trump. Again, these were Democrats leaving uh, and, and voting on Super Tuesday. Yeah. Do you think that was the bottom line here? That was the bottom line. It really it has been all along. And people have been watching Joe for a while. They saw his stumbles, how it was going on. They looked at some other people, looked at Klobuchar, looked at Buttigieg, looked at Bernie as well, and uh, made a different decision uh, moving forward. So the debate tonight in Washington, D.C. Right. now, what should we look for? What, what do you expect? Um, I, I think it's changed everything. I mean, the, the COVID-19 has changed everything, right? Obviously, it's not going to be in Arizona. It'll be no crowd. It'll be more, it'll be more like a meet the press you know, face the nation kind of experience. It'll be two, you know, two guys at a desk having a conversation, it seems like to me. And so I think it's going to be uh, a function of respect and leadership. Both guys are going to try and show leadership over this crisis we're in as opposed to Donald Trump. After Super yeah. Tuesday, Bernie Sanders' speech basically sounded like he was trying to influence Joe Biden about yeah. the, the platform for the Democratic Party. Talk about that because... There's been that position that Bernie Sanders' platform can't beat Donald Trump. So if you're in that negotiating position as Joe Biden and you, you want to make this go away, how much do you concede and can, that, can those concessions ultimately prevent you from beating Donald Trump? Well, for about six months of this campaign, we've had a debate about Medicare for all or improving Obamacare. And the improving Obamacare line is what's worked, right? That's that's what's winning the campaign. So on that topic, I think we're staying pat on improving Obamacare. There won't be Medicare for all coming out of this. But I think because of coronavirus, quite frankly, uh, you're going to be looking at a variety of things, whether it's relief for college debt, for student loan debt, uh, maybe some help for folks that are going to be on unemployment uh, because they're out of work if they work at Pepsi Center or, or Coors Field, those kinds of places. So part of Bernie's platform might come up there. Coronavirus. Let's let's yeah. talk about the potential impact it could have on the election in November. I, I've heard people trying not to politicize this because we're talking about life and death. Right. But yet you tune into CNN, you tune into MSNBC, and you hear subtle messages about Washington D.C. could have done something different or uh, some early finger right. pointing. How do you see right now, very early, this issue, this pandemic, playing into November's election? Well, one of Donald Trump's biggest strengths is kind of the leadership by force. What he's learned, I think, though, is you can't bully a virus, right? There's just, there's just no bullying a virus. I can't do this to you and get, get rid of the virus. So um, that's a problem for him moving forward, I think. And um, uh, how he comes out of this thing is going to really, really matter. I think the speeches that Joe Biden gave and Bernie Sanders gave uh, just this last week were really important to kind of set the table for that. And you'll see that in the debate tonight as well. So fast forwarding to November, and we did this on Super Tuesday. Um, Republicans will say 
our president is virtually unbeatable. Democrats obviously saying if there's turnout, there's frustration, they can point to different sides and say that it's going to be different in 2020 than it was in 2016. So my, my question here is, when you saw what happened after the impeachment proceedings and after the vote, mm -hmm. that, that Monday before the vote, the president's approval rating was higher than it had ever been in the three and a half years or right. three years plus. Get me inside this. What's going to decide things in November? Well, the crystal ball business right now is really taking a hit. I mean, there's been so many kind of earth-shattering actions that have happened, right? Whether it's the impeachment, Super Tuesday, South Carolina, all the endorsements, and now this coronavirus. I mean, we're not done, right? More is going to happen over the summer and over the fall. Uh, the Biden campaign right now is struggling to put themselves together. They, they weren't the best campaign in the primary, functionally, and um, they're going to have to get better, get bigger. They're working from home right now, which is, a, which is going to be a problem for them moving forward. I suspect by summer those things will work themselves out. But Biden's got a big ramp to go through to get ready for November, to get ready for Trump, because Trump's got a big arsenal behind him. So, and that's the difference. We've got 15 yeah. seconds. Trump was kind of in that Biden position four years ago. Right. He didn't have the, the most solid campaign no. committee. What's going to decide this in 10 seconds? Boy, I, I think uh, Donald Trump's leadership, this is, this is a referendum on Donald Trump, basically, bottom line. Steve, appreciate your time. We, we can't <laughs> there you go, there you go. do that. Thanks. Uh, hey, don't forget, you can watch today's segments anytime on the denverchannel.com slash politics unplugged. Want to thank you for joining us. Tony Kovaleski sitting in for Antra Hope to see you back here next week on Politics Unplugged.